Hi, um, my name is Jim Woodside. Um, all the paintings I've talked about here today uh, are from 2020. Um, I live in Massachusetts, but uh, I feel like I live down here. I come down here as often as I can to paint, um, uh, to be in the presence of this environment and paint directly from it. And um, it's a real joy and an honor for me. Uh, this one is also a, a high desert um, image. Um, I call this desert lines, I believe. Um, I think for obvious reasons that there's that kind of um, geometric fracturing um, throughout the painting. Uh, and I try to kind of combine that with almost a sense of calm, you know, by having a strong horizontal almost right in the middle of the picture plane. Um, and yet this kind of foreboding cloud structure above, this was done in, uh, in March and it kind of reflected the, uh, the season down there. Um, and uh, I, 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 what, tie, what pulled this painter together for me, that's why I called it Desert Lines. Um, a, a lot of times when I do a painting, there's kind of a, 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 a gathering motivation or a gathering structure that ties it together for me. And with this one, it was lines, just linear structure. Um, and uh, so there you have it. This one I did um, in March, uh, again, in this um, area south of Tucson, which is pretty remote in the high desert, which I, uh, an area I paint a lot. Um, and um, I, I, I wanted, first of all, to use mostly just large brushes and small ones. There was kind of no in between. There was kind of a sense of extreme to it. Um, and, and to be honest, it was, uh, it was kind of stressful. I mean, it still is kind of stressful, but this is when, when the pandemic was just kicking in. There was a lot of unknown and discussions with my family back home and, you know, that, that, that thing we're all going through. And I, I felt it real strong as I was doing this painting. Um, and I called it Desert Nest, which was, uh, which was kind of a reflection of what I was literally looking at, this nest and, and a simplification of the hill behind where I was painting. Um, and, but it, it uh, uh, sounds corny, but it, it did kind of feel like the last painting on earth to me at the time. Um, and that's kind of what got me through it. It was a very quick painting, a very urgent painting. Um, I think reflected again in the, the large brushwork, um, uh, the simplified use of color. And uh, uh, those, those, those th th that kind of ambiance of the desert that day, what I was going through, they all kind of uh, coalesced into one. Well, with this one, the strong uh, vertical painting, I wanted imagery that kind of fit the canvas. Um, and looking out one morning at this cactus as it was reaching up into this incredible blue, blue sky, and then the half moon left from the night before, it was just, it, it spoke to me. It was like the painting was complete for me and I just executed it from there. Um, I felt so strong about this image, I had to include the text up there. Um, I've always kind of enjoyed text in painting uh, and I do it from time to time. Um, so I, I think that the, the simplicity of that piece is what really speaks to me. This painting I titled, When I Got to the Desert, the Moon Was Already Full. Um, I wanted it to have a kind of story-like quality to it. There was that, uh, that kind of um, uh, joyous experience that I felt at the moment. Um, I, 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 and, I, and looking up, there was this incredible full moon right behind the cactuses, right outside the, the shack where I was working. Um, and so actually I did it the next day. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do it in the dark, but, um, but I did it by looking at the cactuses and then, and then remembering the moon. Um, and I, I, I wanted to center the moon right in the middle of the, uh, of the picture plane. Uh, again, it's just this kind of very simple relationship to, uh, to the subject matter, but um, I, uh, I quite like that one. Uh, this was one that I did uh, several months ago, um, sitting out by some prickly pear cactuses, ob obviously. Um, I, uh, in looking at it now, I, I was thinking about painting in a very gestural way, almost a de Kooning kind of way. Um, it felt very urgent. Um, Everything at that moment felt very urgent. It was kind of when they, uh, we were getting news of the p pandemic. And I don't mean to imply this painting is about the pandemic, but I'm just trying to recall where my head was at the moment. So I did call it uh, Urgency from Arizona. Um, and, and so for me, it was that urgent brushwork the urgency of what was kind of going on in my head. Um, and in terms of the form itself, I, I do it right there in front of the cactus and I complete it there. Um, obviously, I'm not, I'm not 
overly surgical about identifying each, the exactness of it. It, it. For me, it was much more, and it is always much more, about the energy of the object, the energy of the experience. This small one was from a, a couple of months ago. Um, I think I titled it, The Day is Late. Um, and and it, 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 I, I wanted it to have that kind of running out of time um, energy to it, that running out of time feeling, the day itself and all kinds of other things. And um, uh, uh, again, and then the, the strong geometry of the clouds reflected in the, um, as a reflection of the shapes in the, uh, the mountain itself, I think worked pretty well. Um, and again, a pretty simple composition, but, uh, but structurally I tried to really organize it um, around the, the rectangle both the rectangle of the canvas and then the various rectangles within the mountain and then the clouds itself uh, and then the light, the fading last minute light. This painting is a recent painting that I did down um, around Benson, Arizona uh, in the high desert um, where I actually do a lot of my painting. Um, with this one, obviously a strong sense of geometry, but really with the shape of the canvas and what I was trying to to, to articulate in those cloud forms throughout the day was a kind of uh, almost like a blanket, like a, like a Navajo blanket experience. Um, that was sort of my inspiration for this, um, the, in, in terms of the structural flatness and just the organization of the picture plane. Uh, this painting I titled The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, uh, I didn't in tend to sort of do a Sergio Leone inspired painting, but it kind of developed that way. Um, as I, I had set up this skull and this large piece of mesquite right outside the area where I was painting, um, and then I just imposed the mountain behind a little closer and the sun a little larger than it was. Um, I, 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 it, it really developed into that kind of uh, spaghetti western painting for me, um, where the, I could almost hear the music. Um, so that was uh, a, a different painting for me, but I was quite proud of it, and, um, and I, I you know, may do more along those lines. You do a lot of painting in the desert. At some point, it's almost obligatory. You, you've got to do some skulls, and, uh, um, and I, in these last couple of paintings, I've incorporated some. Um, I would, uh, this was a kind of still life that I set up this skull right next to a um, prickly pear cactus outside um, the, uh, the spot where I was painting. And then I imposed another view from another direction behind it. Um, but again, uh, uh, probably closer to that, that, uh, that good, the bad, and the ugly painting I did before, almost a kind of exaggerated, dramatic relationship to the desert, the environment, um, the skull within it. Um, and, uh, and, and the day itself was a little more oppressive and a little more gray, and I, I, I kind of wanted that to be a part of it, but um, uh, it, it, it kind of bounces into the background, one, two, three, like that, and uh, I think it worked out okay. Uh, this was also um, a, a, a fairly recent one um, within the last month. Um, I call this one High Desert. Um, again, that's that area that I'm very familiar with and do a lot of my work. Um, and looking at this painting now, I, I, I think there was a kind of euphoric energy that I was trying to, to bring into the work. I mean, it's not the kind of thing I think about while I'm painting, but, but I, I, I think that uh, a painting doesn't have to be about something, but it has to know something. And, and for me, that's what it, that's what it was, that, that energy, that, that euphoria that I was feeling at that time. Um, in terms of how I tied it together structurally, uh, after playing around with a lot of different solutions, you know, the overuse of the red linear um, stuff on the mountains, the sky, and the cactus, that was the kind of unifying um, theme, I guess. Uh, and then I went back with some of this intense cadmium yellow to kind of brighten it even more um, and give it a, 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 I don't know, a kind of exaggerated stage-like effect. Um, but uh, that's where I was with that. I'm talking about these two together. Uh, it, they're, they're not like a diptych or anything, but they, they're kind of a pair in a way. Um, I called this one uh, Due West 1 and this Due West 2. Uh, this is the uh, Rincon Mountains um, down in, uh, uh, right, uh, uh, in Muscal, Arizona, outside where I was painting. It's kind of the southern end of the Rincon Mountains facing west. Um, 
And in terms of the, the, the structure, uh, this kind of exaggerated geometry here, almost like a pop art feel is what I wanted, you know, that, that, that flatness of the, uh, of the cloud and the hill. And again, this kind of explosive energy here. Now, you know, thinking more about painters like, like Lichtenstein and some of the, the graphic um, um, uh, pop artists. And I think that there's a, there's a certain connection to painting in the desert to interpret, interpreting the geometry that's in front of you that lends itself to that. At least it does for me. Uh, it leads me to that kind of explosive pop art kind of uh, experience. Uh, these are a, a couple of recent small ones that I've done. Um, actually, it's on burlap, which is first attached to canvases. Um, and I love painting on that surface. It, the, the texture does all kinds of amazing things to, uh, to the paint. Um, and, and in these two, uh, I've painted a number of skulls on this last trip. Um, this one, uh, with the skull and the bit of the cactus behind and these three rocks, it, it kind of came out having this almost uh, uh, ominous uh, witchcraft look to it, which I wasn't thinking that, but but I don't know, it kind of fit into the Sonoran Desert at that moment for me, and I, I was pleased with that. As the painting started to develop and I saw that happening, I heightened the color behind to this intense yellow um, to kind of uh, accentuate that, that strangeness to it. Um, this one over here, a kind of self-explanatory, uh, just uh, start with the start of monsoon season. It's just magnificent um, to see these. I never get tired of seeing them over and over again. And this one did pretty quickly um, before I started to get wet. Uh, and I think I called it a little monsoon or a tiny monsoon. Um, what's important to me there is that that light kind of seeping out n near the mountain, which you always see kind of under the clouds. I, I love that. A lot of times I'll think about influences in other painters. Um, and what I was thinking with this linear stuff on the cloud is uh, Mondrian, um, uh, Mondrian landscape paintings, which I've always loved since I was a little kid. That's the, the, the plus and minus um, uh, paint, uh, paintings and drawings of trees and landscapes. They're just um, beautiful. And those those things kind of will come out in my paintings a lot and, and they continue to resonate with me.